right, today's video, we're taking a look at this, the Pow Kitty A66 Pocket Games Player. Uh, looking at the packaging here, we just got a no frills, no thrills, just bare bones packaging. I'm okay with that. It's kind of in line with the Pow Kitty releases today. So unboxing it, see what we get. So we have our charging cable, I'm guessing. USB-C connection, which is great. I'm tired of seeing micro USB used, so good to see USB-C there. We have an instruction pamphlet. We've got English on one side, Chinese on the other. And then we have the little guy itself, the A66 Pocket Games Player. Now this thing is pretty small. Obviously, if you've got big hands or you want a big handheld, this is not the device for you. This is for somebody that literally wants to slide something in their pocket, have something on the go. This thing is a little bit bigger than a credit card but not by a whole lot. It's basically four inches long and two inches tall. So that gives you a good idea of how, you know, much space you'd need to go ahead and slide this in the pocket. It's not thick at all. And comparing it to say Nintendo Game & Watch here and here, as you can see, it's even smaller than the Game & Watch, a little bit shorter on the top and the bottom. So go ahead and check it out. We've got D-pad, feels good. Nice clicky responsiveness, not mushy. The bottom here, we've got a select, a menu, a start button, our charging port, single mono speaker here in the right hand corner. Then we have four action buttons, equally as clicky and responsive as the D pad. We've got L and R buttons up top here, and that looks to be it, except for the power button here on the right hand side. Go ahead and power it up. So the screen itself is two inches across. It is a 320 by 240 resolution screen. Uh, again, obviously you know what you're getting if you're interested in buying something like this. This is a very small portable device. If you need something bigger, maybe your eyesight's bad, then again, this is definitely not for you. But as far as brightness, screen contrast and everything, it looks pretty good for being two inches. So we got our bare bones menu here. We got some little happy-go-lucky chiptune 8-bit music. So we got our game file settings let's go to settings see what all we can do here so it looks like we could change the key mapping change the language volume of course turn off the background music or turn it up louder if you don't want to hear that music brightness we're all the way maxed out refresh the roms this did come with a micro sd card preloaded with about 4,000 games so this micro sd port right here you can add your own games you want just pop out the sd card put the files you want on there and then you're good to go Factory reset device info. Let's see what we got here. So mode, pow kitty. So this is on custom firmware 0.104. CPU 717 megahertz. Memory 64 SD card. You know, we got seven gigabytes full of a 14 card. And it's just bare bones basic information. Anyways, games, games, games. That's that's all we really care about. So this will play all your retro consoles, your Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Master System. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. Uh, what else we got? PlayStation and I think PC Engine. What you're after are the retro games, so the systems. Oh yeah, arcade, of course, duh. How can I fit arcade? So we got arcade, Neo Geo, NES slash Famicom, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive slash Genesis, Master System, PC Engine, and PlayStation. Now obviously it's gonna be a hit or miss as far as performance goes how well some of these games run. And while it does say it is capable of playing PlayStation games, I'll tell you right now, the ones I've loaded on here, they just don't work. Uh, this this thing's really not super powerful, so I don't recommend you playing PlayStation games on it. Honestly, you're just not gonna have a great experience. Uh, the control layout, the size of the screen, the size of the device and everything, this thing should really be used only for those older retro systems in particular. And the top buttons we do have, uh, you could play fighting games with this directional pad, but having the four action buttons here and the two action buttons up top is going to make that less than ideal. But, you know, you do you. Live your life. But anyways, this thing is retail priced at about $40. If you're interested in picking up one of these, I'll put a product link down in the video description box below. So again, navigation is easy. You just go into here. Playlist. This will show all the games you've recently played. Your favorites, of course. Anything you want to select as a favorite will be here. Retro game, this is where you actually want to go to play the games loaded on the SD card. The game, again, is just those random three games that are preloaded on this device, but what you're after is this retro game folder. I'm going to select it, 
now you've got all your different systems. We got Arcade, Neo Geo, Famicom. Let's go ahead and go to NES Famicom. We see the games listed here. If you push over to the right one more time, you'll get to see the box art. A lot of these do have Japanese box art as well as Japanese titles, but it is still pretty easy to find the games you want to test out. Go ahead and pick up one. Loads up. Now, depending on how big the file size is, there will be a loading screen and a, a measure bar to indicate how quickly it is loading, but this is a, a very small file size game, so it shouldn't be an issue. So one thing to note, anytime any of the systems whatsoever, you hit that middle button, it brings up your menu options. So you can go back, you can use that as a default pause, you can save your game, and you can load games. So all of these systems are able to save and load save states, which is great. Uh, like I said, if you're sitting there on a commute, Playing this on the bus or the train or something like that, you can save your Pokemon progress, your, your Mario Brothers or whatever. Save where you are, get off, go to work, come back on your lunch break or whatever, load up your save state and you'll be good to go. You can also change the game volume. You can exit the game completely and go back to the menu, but we'll go ahead and hit continue and we'll get some gameplay going. lot of garbage here in the Super Famicom folder specifically. So, I mean, just rows and rows and rows of these games that are just called hack. I mean, a lot of filler. Same thing with the arcade. As you can see there's multiple multiple versions of Dungeons and Dragons. You get down to the Street Fighters and there's probably you know 50 different versions of Marvel vs. Super Heroes, Street Fighter 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, Vampire Hunter. I mean just loads and loads and loads of different versions of the exact same game. So that 4,000 built-in games is a little bit misleading. 